Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College's Renewable Energy Technology Program, this EET 121 Digital One. Okay, guys, today we're going to finish up Chapter 4 with a rediscussion of programmable logic devices. We ended Chapter 3 with a quick discussion of some of these, and we're going to relook at a couple of them. First of all is the programmable array logic. The second is the generic array logic. Both of them have a programmable AND array, which feeds a fixed OR array, and an output, uh, some output logic. But the GAL has a reprogrammable AND array, so we need to remember that. But we discussed earlier using a diagram like these up here at the top, where there's two input AND gates on the right, and there's a bunch of feeder lines for their A, our not A, and our B, and our not B. What we're going to use here is just some simplified diagrams. The simplified diagrams I've drawn right here, where we've got our still have our A and our not A, our B and our not B, and our C and our not C. But check out these AND gates. It's just got one line feeding them. So how you do use these simplified uh, connections here is basically all you do is put a fuse or an X mark here. So that's A, that's not B, C, and how many inputs here? Three. So what in reality this looks like here is basically a three input AND gate where A, not B, C are being fed into that three input AND gate. So just think of it as one input line and then this number here is how many actual input lines they are, and the fuses where those things are located. Those X's are our fuses, if you remember right. We discussed our fuses connecting here, and they're either blown open or connected. If there's an X there, that means they're still connected. If there's no X, they're not connected. They're blown open. OK, so again, our number of inputs. So this one's got two inputs for this one, and let's call this one A. And B, this one's got um, one input. It's got not A, and so let's see, just two, three. I'm just going to do some random ones. And this one's got this and that. So what does this one look like? We already did this one. This one was A and not B and C. What is this guy? Well, it's a two input gate. So it's A and looks like B. This one's a one input gate, and that's not A. This one right here, B and it looks like not C. And then this guy is a three input AND gate, A and B and C. Now, what does this OR gate do? Well, it's the, the Boolean sum of all these. So A, so that's this guy. Boolean addition, meaning OR. That's that one. And the final one, which was just A and B and C. And that's our output X. So that is how a sum of products is implemented using a PAL. Um, one thing I want to talk about, though, is our input buffers. So, you know, I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five AND gates. I mean, can these input lines, A and not A, can they really drive uh, five AND gates? Well, TTL logic, we know that it can drive up to 20 gates, but beyond 20, it's going to have problems. So some of these these uh, programmable devices have, might, might have more than 20 gates. So what you have is these input buffers. What the input buffers do, just think this is A coming in. And because there's no bubble there, it's connecting A. And that bubble is connecting not A. So that's what's feeding it. This right here basically gives enough power that it can drive more than 20 gates or however many gates you have. OK, um, so we talked about the simplified connections. We talked about input buffers. Um, we want to talk about this uh, 
output. Okay, this is again, we we're talking about pals right here. We're going to come back and talk about gal. Okay, so output. What is our output logic? Well, there's three basic things for uh, the output logic for a pal. One is basic our combinational output, where you can have an active high or an active low, or in a tri-state case, it's a disconnect. So basically, this is, you can either, that's an active high, this active low. So if I stuck a gate right here, like it looks like that, what is that? That's an active high output. If I put the bubble on it, that's an active low. So this is this is the AND array on this side of the blue line. That's the AND array. This is the OR array on that side of the blue line. And now this red line here, that's the OR, and this is the output logic. Because if you remember right, our block diagram, we've got a programmable AND, our fixed OR, and our output logic. So red line, blue line, right there. OK, so that was our combinational logic, where we've got an active high, and active low, and we can disconnect it. Um, additionally, this is a really super cool feature um, that was, we have a, basically, you can feed your output back to your input. So if you can imagine what's looking, it's going to get messy here. Well, here. Here's, a, here's our OR, here's our active high, or excuse me, active low output. What you can do, that's X, 